Hello, my name is John, and this is the Mask Face Journal, and this is what I read this week. Since I was sick last week, I'm going to quickly run through the comics that I read last week before I go into the comics that I read this week. Titans, number five, written by Dan Abnett and art by Brett Booth. This is what I say every time with this, but I love it. It reads like a classic Wally West Flash story, and it's great. Teen Titans, number two, by Benjamin Percy in Diogenes Nevis. This was all right. A lot of action, but also a lot of exposition. Damien's behavior in the previous issues are explained here. He's still a dick, but he had reasons. Batgirl, number five, written by Hope Larson and art by Raphael Albuquerque. Well, this story is over, and it didn't really entice me to keep going after this. Throughout this, I thought it was okay to meh, but these last two issues really lost me. The Flash, number 11, written by Joshua Williamson and art by David Gianfelis. This is exposition the issue. It's pretty much just a bunch of guys standing around talking about what's happening. It's moving the story along and it's a somewhat interesting turn of events, but it doesn't really change the fact that it's just a bunch of guys standing around talking for an entire issue. Detective Comics number 945 written by James Tinney in the fourth and art by Al Barionevo and Carmen Carnero. I am butchering these names, by the way. So much drama. This is a status update on the Bat family and how the villains are getting under everyone's skin. Spoiler and Clayface are the most affected, it seems. The main difference between this and The Flash is that The Flash furthers plot and this is all about character. Action Comics number 968, written by Dan Jurgens and art by Tyler Kirkham. This was pretty good. Action and plot and questioning of ethics. Ingredients to make a decent Superman story. The issue of the fake Clark Kent is still nagging. He's just there. When are we going to actually do something with him? Wonder Woman number 11, written by Greg Rucka and art by Liam Sharp. Alright, not as good as the past parts, as usual, but better than it has been. I'm really curious as to how this will all fit together. As expected, this portrays all of Azarello's run as a lie, but who, why and how are still a burning question. What is the deal with these different Amazons? Now let's move on to the three books that I actually read this week. New Talent Showcase number one. This isn't really something that is easy to talk about in this kind of format. It's an 80 page anthology of stories from a workshop DC had with the new writers and artists. You'd think that this would be a bunch of one and done stories, but a lot of them end up to be continued note. I've got to be honest and say that none of these stories really grabbed my interest, partially because of this. I do however like this book in theory. I like the idea of having this as a way to bring in new talent to the industry, and I support that DC is planning on continuing this experiment. Superman Annual Number 1, written by Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason, and art by Jorge Jimenez. This is tying back to the very first issue of this series, where Superman left a strange glowing handprint in the vegetation. That being said, I don't really get this story. It's a confrontation between Superman and Swamp Thing. Superman is out looking for why there's an artificial drought, and Swamp Thing is disturbed because Superman is wrong for the green, whatever that means. I, I fail to see how Superman's emotional state has anything to do with what Swamp Thing is concerned about. I also don't think that that emotional state has been present in the Superman run. Like I said, I don't really get it. Batman Annual Number 1 This is a series of vignettes surrounding Batman and Christmas, closer to what I expected New Talent Showcase to be. First, there's an Ace the Bat Hound story by Tom King and David Finch. Second part is an interlude by Scott Snyder, Ray Fox and Declan Shelby. Third part is a Harley Quinn and Batman story by Paul Dini and Neil Adams. Then Steve Orlando and Riley Rosmo is setting up something for next year, hard to tell exactly what. And finally, Scott Brian Wilson and Bilkis Averly tells a short story about some Arkham inmates. It's a nice but entirely skippable book. I personally have always been a sucker for short one and done Batman stories, so I recommend it on that basis. But if you want a little more meat, so to speak, this might not be for you. Batman and Christmas is the strangely fitting combination. So that was what I read this week. Did you enjoy this video? Please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. If you didn't enjoy it or disagree with me, uh, please let me know in the comments. I am done for this week.